Hello and welcome to our The Spirit of Slovenian Mobility event. This would be a series of five events and the first topic today will be the best of urban air mobility. So my name is Daniel Audegic and I'm the CEO of AV Living Lab and AV Living Lab is basically the urban mobility test bed. So why we decided to organize five events? Uh, the thing that what we will show is the two trends. One trend is that uh, population in cities and in urban area is growing. So in 50s, we had only two cities, you know, considered as a mega cities with uh, which were Tokyo and New York. And today we see a growth. So the first trend talks that we need to manage better the space, the infrastructure, the services in cities. And second trend is the trend of uh, the rise of mega cities. Now, in this trend, we see that more and more cities will be uh, about 10 million. And the question is how to uh, organize our life and tr transport of goods and people around. So therefore, we believe that urban air mobility will play an important role by using the third dimension. And for that purpose, we organized uh, the presentation of Slovenian ecosystem of urban air mobility players. Uh, so in today's presentation, you will see a, a short keynotes and then a round tables from three companies um, working with unmanned aerial system, one providing services, trainings and education, and one providing the urban air mobility simulators. And why we selected uh, to invite them is basically because we believe that first missions and applications in mega cities uh, will, be not, will not be passenger operations yet, but more like cargo deliveries, air medical, surveillance, law enforcement, and so on. So uh, it's time to start. Now I will give the word to our organizer, uh, the organization Spirit of Slovenia, and to Mr. Vit Habian, who is the head of foreign direct investment at promotion department. So Mr. Vit, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Uh, dear ladies, dear gentlemen, good day to all of you. I'm honored to welcome you on the first in a series of five mobility events, the spirit of Slovenian mobility, where we'll introduce the most innovative Slovenian mob mobility startups and companies. The objective of the events is to introduce this new Slovenian mobility ecosystem, enable networking, and to open new opportunities for partnerships and investments. Mobility has always been, and still is, one of the most important businesses in Slovenia. There are more than 100 tier one and tier two suppliers, and more than 600 sub suppliers which are generating more than 70% of Slovenian GDP. Mobility industry creates more than 20% of our export and 25% of all awarded innovations in Slovenia comes from mobility sector. Today, we'll focus on air mobility. And in the next four events, we will also meet best solutions in high-end mobility, micro-mobility, mobility as a service, and logistics. You may ask yourself, what has Slovenia as such a small country to show and bring to the world in uh, future mobility? I'm sure that quite a lot, and we'll try to, to show you that during all these events, which will be organized and presented. Slovenia ranks sixth in the world in the number of hidden champions per million inhabitants. So we can say that we are a kind of country of hidden champions. We are great, especially in new and niche markets. How is this possible? Because almost 50% of our young people are studying and researching at our globally recognized and, um, universities. And more than 41% of all students graduated in science and engineering. We have the most AI researchers uh, per capita in European Union, and also UNESCO's AI center is in Slovenia. We have always been among the first 
to adopt new mobility technologies. The first airplane on the Slovenian soil was constructed just six years after Wright Brothers. And Slovenian airplane, Pipistril, Velis Electro, is the first EASA certified electric airplane. As, a, as an economy, we are focusing on green technologies with creative talent of our workforce delivering smart solutions. I hope that situation in the world will allow us to welcome you in Slovenia soon and that you will also get to know us not only as a great tourist destination, but also as an innovative and highly developed country. You're also welcome to meet us at our pavilion in this year's uh, Expo Dubai. But until then, uh, let's hear breakthrough solutions from a few of our companies and their, and their vision of future in urban air mobility. Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Habian, for your kind words. And I will. And now let's start with our, you know, presentation of urban air mobility. And before I give the word to our speakers, just quick facts about, you know, uh, Slovenian role in mobility and in in aerospace. So uh, I don't know how familiar you are, but in Slovenia, uh, 5,200 5, years ago was found the first, the oldest wheel with axle. Uh, and which was proved that mobility has quite a long roots. But this is not the only thing that we are very proud on. What Mr. Habian already said is that, which we will see is that our airspace engineer, Edward Rusian, did a first successful takeoff with biplane in 1909. Then uh, 20 years later, uh, our Slovenian aerospace uh, engineer, Herman Potocnik, did the first design of space station where he was in, in 80 drawings um, proposed how the propulsion should be um, achieved uh, to do the takeoff, then how, you know, the solar collection would be uh, collected in the space, how the waste and, um, and the water recycling, how the oxygen would be provided, so quite amazing. But also if we do fast forward to today's time, uh, we have a very active University of Ljubljana in aerospace uh, field. And uh, there is in US is each year a so-called university championship for radio controlled aircraft, uh, which is called design build fly. And uh, in, uh, so from 2014, 2019, Slovenia was always top five uh, among more than a hundred universities. So yes, we have a talent and we have a skills. So now let's, I would like really to invite our first uh, uh, speaker. He is coming from the company Collector Digital. His name is uh, Mr. Marco Taller, so who is the CTO of Collector Digital and the CEO of Ernemix. So Marco, please share with us your presentation. Hello everybody, and thank you for uh, having me today. In the next eight minutes or so, I would like to give you a short overview uh, of development approaches, technologies and tools that enable us to redefine what is possible in the field of autonomous robotic systems in general and unmanned aircraft systems in particular. But before we dive into the presentation, uh, just a short overview. Collector Digital is one of four strategic business units of Collector Group, a multinational conglomerate with 35 companies and more than 5,000 employees in America, Europe, and Asia, but with headquarters in Slovenia. In digital, uh, we develop breakthrough products and services, predominantly for the global industry 4.0 market. And we have more than 70 internationally recognized experts in the field of artificial intelligence, autonomous robotics, simulation technologies, automated vision, and digital platforms. The Arnamics company is an R&D powerhouse inside digital, specializing in aerial and ground-based autonomous robotic systems. And we cover the complete development cycle from conceptual design to serial production. Our reference projects include vertical takeoff and landing and multi-rotor unmanned aircraft systems, uh, autonomous mobile robots, and intelligent robotic workers. 
But in addition to all the in-house mechanical and electrical engineering of our products, we center our development around proprietary Aerodynamics development platform. ADP is a set of development technologies and tools that enable us to develop complex autonomous robots up to an order of magnitude faster than with traditional development methods. And the ADP includes custom model-based design simulation tools for high fidelity simulation and optimization of complex robotic systems and their control algorithms, custom engineered electronics and embedded computers, such as autopilots, AI-based robot controllers, motor controllers, battery management systems, a proprietary real-time operating system, and performance-optimized firmware specifically for our embedded computers, also a library of complex control algorithms, navigation and motion control systems. And in addition to development of specific robots, we also provide all the necessary infrastructure for remote monitoring, anomaly detection, and remote control of those robots. But also last but not least, a lot of our robot development is based on the use of artificial intelligence, which enables us to continuously improve our robot performance over time, and also take advantage of so-called network-based learning approach. And this approach enables the robot to learn from experience and share those learnings across all the robots in the network. And basically the end result of this is that this enables an exponential growth of knowledge inside the robotic network. And we have the complete AI development pipeline and data management system that supports that. You know, model-based design on one hand and deeply integrated custom electronics on the other redefine what is possible in terms of speed and quality of development. Uh, the main idea is we simulate all system aspects, its environment, and the interaction between the system and its environment. And we design and optimize system control algorithms based on executed simulations. And then when we are satisfied with the performance of those algorithms, we transfer them with a single click to our embedded electronics in the real life prototype. We then operate and test the system in, in the real world. And there are two very important advantages the Aerodynamics Development Platform brings us. You know, the first is that during system operation, we can observe any system variable and analyze system performance in real time. But the second, even maybe more important, uh, is that after we land the system, we transfer all the collected operating data back to our simulation environment. And based on that data, we can increase the accuracy and fidelity of the simulation model. With this approach, we have basically, you know, just closed the simulation loop. What that means is the more we fly, the more data we gather, the better the simulation model and the less we need to fly. So the end result is an extremely short and efficient development cycle that is up to an order of magnitude shorter than when conventional development methods. And also we can go from simulation to full scale prototype in a single step, because usually the simulation environment is accurate enough out of the box. And let's take a look at an example of Aerodynamics Development Platform in action. You know, this was a fun little project of pushing the flight dynamics envelope to its limits by creating a hybrid between a fixed wing aircraft and a multi rotor helicopter. In terms of flight dynamics, we were combining the lift generated by vertical thrust propellers with the lift generated by the wing. And the end result completely redefines flight dynamic capabilities of the system. You know, and with the use of Aerodynamics Development Platform, we were able to go from initial idea to flying prototype you see here in approximately two weeks time. And this really showcases the power of ADP for prototype development. Uh, by the way, if you want to enjoy some more fun with this aircraft, you can also find the video on YouTube. Now, I believe it's very important to acknowledge that the aircraft alone is a lot of times only a container for data acquisition sensors and edge computing. In reality, the majority of actual added value is generated in accompanying software. And some examples of where value generation happens are defined on the slide. However, I would like to touch on the last two, namely shadow mode testing and network-based learning that can generate a disproportionate amount of added value. And 
how are we able to accomplish that? Well, the first step is to detect anomalies or suboptimal conditions in system operation, usually based on digital twins. We then analyze the anomalies or suboptimal conditions and simulate them in the digital twin to develop new high-performing versions of desired control algorithms. After that, we perform over-the-air updates and test those development candidate versions in shadow mode on actual robots that operate in real life. Shadow mode is uh, basically a parallel testing mode where a control algorithm development candidate is running in parallel to the primary control algorithm. And both use actual sensor data in real time. The only difference is that the development candidate outputs are not controlling the actual robot, while the primary control algorithm outputs are. And by comparing the two output sets, we can assess the development candidate robustness and performance in real life testing without any negative effects. And this increases the system performance even further in comparison with digital twin only development. The last step, of course, then is to analyze and validate system performance of individual development candidates and select the one that performed the best. We then deploy the selected solution version to live operation across the whole network. And with it, we continuously repeat the learning cycle over all the robots in the network and distribute the learnings from a single robot to the whole network. And this approach that we call network-based learning can completely transform the rate of progress over time and over the number of systems in the network. So I hope I was able to provide you with some insights into what is possible to do in the field of autonomous robotic systems in general and unmanned aircraft systems in particular. And in today's presentation, you know, my intention was to showcase the technology and know how we have in Slovenia in the field of advanced autonomous robotic systems, and maybe you know, to spark an idea or two about pushing the state of the art in this field. Uh, so if you have any specific questions or ideas uh, you would like to discuss with us, well, please just uh, let us know. With that, uh, it was a pleasure and an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marco, for these insights. And of course, there will be opportunity to interact with you later on in the roundtable. So the next one is Marco Pelhan coming from the company Siastral. And Marco Pelhan is the co-founder and chief strategy officer at Siastral. So Marco, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks very much. And uh, thank you to my other Marco for uh, starting uh, this event today. Uh, so I will uh, talk a little bit about uh, Astral, our company. Uh, and as you could see, even from the previous presentation, uh, this Slovenian ecology is uh, uh, very much an ecology, an ecosystem. And uh, uh, the interesting thing is that, uh, you know, literally almost all, almost all of the, of the panelists and presenters today have uh, in one way or the other uh, already collaborated or we are collaborating in different projects at the moment. So uh, that's, that's something to be said, of course, about, you know, our, our uh, general environment uh, uh, here. So uh, a little bit about C Astral. Uh, who are we? We are a company, we are based in Eidoschina in Slovenia, same town uh, as Pipistrel and uh, just a uh, uh, you know, a few nautical miles away from uh, the test field where Edward Rusian tested his aircraft in the beginning of the 20th century. And uh, so aerospace has always been uh, part of uh, kind of the cultural background here uh, where we are now. And um, it's, it's no, uh, not a strange thing probably that two of the companies that are focused uh, on manufacturing uh, systems, Pipistrel and uh, ourselves, uh, are based here uh, somehow in a very small town that is uh, kind of not comparable to anything else uh, that we know of in Europe, right? I mean, this is a place with 6,000 inhabitants. Uh, anyway, so which of course has its own problems, as you can imagine. Um, we are a company that uh, started um, from a research uh, background uh, back in 1999, um, the first uh, unmanned research uh, systems, and we were also responsible for the first unmanned autonomous flight in Slovenia, which happened in uh, 2005. 
and uh, then we started the company in 2007. Uh, and for now, we are uh, one of the market leaders. It's a it's a crowded field, uh, definitely, uh, in the fixed wing uh, field uh, uh, globally. So, and from 2019, we are also a member of a Japanese consortium uh, called Terra Drone Group. Uh, so that's uh, uh, one of our partners now in the company. It's also, and we have a little bit of Japanese genome in the company. Uh, this is our timeline, as I mentioned, uh, um, 1999 to 2005, it was really a kind of a research uh, moment. Then the company started 2007. We did a lot of our beginning uh, research in the Arctic and Antarctica, uh, 2007, uh, 2009, 2010, and uh, where when we started also our first sales so of our first unmanned system, which is called the Bramor. Currently, we have uh, two main, well, three main product lines. One is uh, uh, Bramor, the other is Atlas Advanced Technology Light Acquisition System, which is a smaller uh, system, uh, and uh, also uh, VTOL for inspections of uh, inside robotic inspections for, uh, you know, gas tanks and things like that. And uh, we are also developing um, other systems, of course, always. Uh, there's a lot of R&D in the company uh, constantly, and our systems have flown for now uh, cumulative uh, more than 130,000 hours globally, and we are selling uh, nowadays in 70 countries. So that's um, I think 71. Uh, so uh, we are just we just last year we were a little bit below 70. Now we are a little bit above 70. Um, our focus has always been uh, long duration flights. Uh, we kind of bet on the on the early development of that market, which was uh, uh, also provided its own uh, challenges, as you can imagine. Legislation is lagging and has been lagging uh, always. It's it's a matter of you know fact that we were a little bit too early. Uh, when we started the company, uh, basically there was uh, very, very few European companies that were on the commercial market uh, selling uh, small unmanned systems. And as you know, the proper legislation from the European on the European level happened only last year. So, uh, and we were all fighting for it for a very, very long time because we were very worried about this uh, national. Uh, a legislation kind of um, rainbow uh, that we had to deal with, especially with our customers. So Europe has been always kind of a problematic market for us because of this. And uh, um, our systems are, uh, yes, we have them in Europe everywhere almost, but not a lot. And now hopefully this will be slowly changing also with the beyond visual line of sight capabilities and the new EASA rules and so on. Uh, so these are the systems that I talked about, Bramor, uh, uh, Family, Atlas, and uh, I don't have here also our uh, uh, UT drone uh, robotic system. We are a vertically integrated company. Uh, we produce software, hardware, uh, and uh, integrate the airplanes. Uh, that's not really by design, it was by necessity. Uh, since a lot of the um, products that we had to integrate in our uh, systems were commercial components, some of them did not have aviation level uh, quality, let's call it, or redundancy and so on. So we, we have been uh, really beefing up for the electronics side of the company. And uh, we are going to expand in that direction, especially on the communication side. We have a new product coming on the market uh, in the first quarter of 2022, which will um, be one of the first uh, um, European produced, uh, uh, very novel technology uh, mesh IP uh, uh, radios. Uh, specifically aimed at the unmanned uh, autonomous uh, systems, autonomous vehicles market. And um, we, as uh, um, not unlike our colleagues, we are, of course, also a software company. Uh, we um, created our own 
command and control software with a simulator, integrated simulator, uh, uh, which is uh, um, built on a very open platform since we design a lot of custom systems. So, uh, but, you know, focus is all, has always been on ergonomics uh, and of course on the presentation of data and so on. And uh, still to this day, uh, this is still one of the better softwares for unmanned systems out there for sure. And uh, we're very, um, you know, proud of, of this product and uh, we always get a lot of attention for it uh, from our competitors too. And uh, mobile ad hoc network, we integrate a lot of radios. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the radios, uh, one of the networks that our system use. Um, we mostly collaborate here with American companies, uh, two specific ones, uh, Trelly Square and Silvus. But uh, as I said, we also are working on our own uh, uh, networking system, specifically also for cost control and so on. A lot of our customers that you can see here on this slide are not able to uh, finance uh, military grade radios, right? Which cost, you know, um, up from 10,000 euros per unit. Uh, uh, so it's a, that's, a, that's a huge cost uh, on the radio, on the communication side. So we're trying to, to lower that for, for our uh, customers. Uh, the missions that our systems are used for uh, span from search and rescue, remote sensing, wildfire management, infrastructure control, um, woods and landscapes management, natural disasters, linear infrastructure monitoring and security and defense. And, you know, this is really a list that comes from our users. It's not like a wish list, uh, but definitely a uh, uh, very, very uh, wide swath of users. And of course, uh, with it comes also the integration into unmanned uh, uh, traffic and we have been also really, really early on uh, working with uh, partners from all around uh, Europe uh, on three uh, different projects of the single European Sky Air Traffic Management, the CSAR Consortia, which were Terra, Impetus, and Safir. And uh, so these were really um, large consortia around, uh, you know, eight to ten companies and institutes together. But here we really had uh, uh, the privilege of working with a lot of uh, uh, very, you know, big companies like Boeing and uh, Jepson, uh, Amazon, Unifly, Leonardo. So you, these are uh, the actual partners of these projects. And, and it was, uh, um, you know, and we are continuing, of course, in that direction because we see UTM is, of course, a very important part of the whole integration of admin systems into the urban uh, uh, environments and uh, without uh, proper UTM and uh, management and air traffic management, that's not going to happen. Uh, but Sea Astral, you know, we, we, we have big ambitions uh, on one side uh, through TerraDrone. On the other, uh, we have, we are expanding our uh, presence also on, to, on the uh, North American market. It has always been a very interesting market for us. And a lot of first adopters of our technology come from there. And uh, uh, so we are leveraging kind of this dual position uh, that we have here. And of course, we have also Japan on the other side uh, uh, because Southeast Asia, South America uh, and Africa have been really, really uh, um, big markets for, for our company. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are working on, on expanding that. So really, we are a one-stop solution provider for whole unmanned ecology, um, both unmanned air traffic management and urban mobility solutions are part of what we are planning to do, are doing, uh, our customers are doing around the world. And connected to this, we are also uh, now uh, for the past half year working on a new family of VTOL uh, systems together with uh, our sister company here, Pipistrel, on uh, uh, the, the smaller, for them, version with a maximum takeoff mass of 150 kilos uh, VTOL system uh, for um, cargo operations 
uh, mostly that's kind of the first uh, 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 focus of it, but also, of course, uh, ISR and so on. On the research side, uh, we are very, very busy on a, on a rather restricted, so I cannot talk much about it, project that is connected to the European Defense Agency. Uh, we are working on uh, drone swarms uh, uh, research, robotic uh, swarms research. As a matter of fact, we have just completed uh, a few, two weeks ago, uh, some swarming, autonomous swarming flights uh, uh, for the first time here in Slovenia. And uh, we will be continuing in that uh, vector. That project is uh, uh, going to last until the end of next year. And uh, we've, you know, we are learning a lot, of course, because um, as uh, uh, on the side of uh, aerodynamics, you know, these these drones have to be rather smart to be able to collaborate with each other. So there's a lot of very interesting vectors that we are working on in that direction. And really, you know, delivery systems, VTOLs are something that we're going towards. And uh, of course, our goal is to have persistent 24 7 robotic uh, sky operations with the drones uh, doing the jobs that people don't like to do. Uh, that's it. That's uh, everything from me. Thank you. Thank you, Marco, for this really always inspiring presentation. So each time I see it, I see a progress and welcome back from US. So. Uh, thank you for joining us. So uh, the next presentation uh, will be from company Elvonics. And we have, so Elvonics is the high-tech product and solution provider for unmanned area systems with their, you know, integrated platform. And uh, the presentation will be delivered by Janas Langus, who is the CEO of Elvonics. So Janas, please. Daniel, thank you for... Uh, for the board. So I would also like to thank you for this opportunity to show and uh, to uh, discuss how Elevonics can contribute to unmanned aerial mobility. I would like to start with uh, one holistic picture. So this is basically what uh, UA UAM looks to the end user. And I hope that we will some, someday be able to show and to make a system that will work like this. So this is the holistic encapsulation of idea, how the unmanned aerial mobility would look in the future. So, but we as engineers are very interested in what is under the hood. So what is under this picture? And uh, in our company, we have a lot of um, brainstorming sessions where we want to further uh, increase the competency of our products and so forth. And uh, urban air mobility is one of the topics that we discussed. And uh, one of the first uh, ideas that came up was that this is really a complex system. It will involve a lot of knowledge from multidisciplinary fields. And uh, this means that uh, a lot of uh, different uh, professionals will have to work in close collaboration to make the system work. But in the end, uh, what will also be required are professional and reliable tools that will do some tasks that are on hand. And this is where I believe that our company comes in with our modular uh, uh, UAV design. When we started our company, we first did a market research and we saw that there are a couple of different uh, options on the market. So you have fixed wing, you have multi-copters, you have uh, vertical takeoff or uh, um, catapult launch solutions, but and uh, most of them are targeted at some specific, to doing some specific tasks. And we asked ourselves, is it possible to have one UAV design that could do more, more different tasks and uh, very uh, different uh, uh, missions? And we came up with a solution that uh, requires a central uh, fuselage where we can install different payloads and then based on mission uh, requirements, we choose the uh, wing platform and deliver a um, uh, uh, complete UAV to our customer to, to do different tasks. So uh, this modularity allows us to use our UAVs in very different areas from agriculture to terrain mapping, search and rescue and so forth. And lately we have also uh, touched the urban air mobility aspects with our solutions. We currently have three platforms developed. Uh, we started with Delta, then moved on to Sierra, and lately 
the, the market and uh, all the users are uh, looking for vertical takeoff solutions. So we upgraded our Sierra to have the VTOL capabilities. Just a short uh, brief this description of our Delta, okay. So this is the first uh, UAV platform that our company started with. And this, this was our, let's say a learning curve. Uh, we did a lot of flight testing, a lot of uh, development and also some serious work with it. And uh, it, it is quite capable platform for doing agricultural mappings uh, in precision agriculture for uh, terrain monitoring and uh, disaster management and, and so on. And although we did certify it to fly over urban areas, it is actually not uh, 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 quite suitable to do uh, tasks over urban areas. Uh, for urban environment, the VTOL platforms are much more appropriate. So what VTOL means is this is vertical takeoff and landing, which means that uh, we can land uh, and take off vertically as a helicopter and then at certain uh, um, altitude, we then uh, transition into forward flight. This means that um, this kind of platform has uh, uh, both uh, capabilities of uh, uh, multicopters, which are very convenient for use, uh, uh, for, for taking off from small spaces. And then once you are in the air, you use the, uh, the, the, um, the, so uh, you have more fuel economy or uh, uh, electrical economy from forward flight. It, uh, the platform also comes with all the bells and whistles from composite structure, certified materials and so forth, which make it a great tool for operations in urban environment. This platform is already on the market. Uh, it comes in a transport case. It's uh, very suitable to, for use for different users. But uh, in the urban environment or in the urban uh, aerial mobility environment, we currently see that it could perform uh, several different tasks. From, from instance, it could be used for sample transport, for small cargo delivery. It could also be used for first responder in case of, uh, let, let's say, a car accident or a fire. It could be sent to, have, to provide a live uh, a video feed. It could, uh, Use, it could be used for traffic surveillance and so forth. But uh, also one important uh, aspect of using the currently available UAVs uh, for urban air, mo air mobility is that we think that this technology could be a great breakthrough uh, for uh, paving the road for personal, personal air vehicles, which are coming uh, in the next uh, generations. So a bit about our company, we are quite a young company. Uh, we started developing our products in, uh, in 2014, 16. Uh, th these were the first steps. And lately uh, we have uh, founded our company in 2018. We are uh, agile and multidisciplinary. Our main focus are research and development in the field of UAVs. We also manufacture our products and uh, through, uh, through the years, we uh, gathered a lot of uh, capabilities in integrating different payloads, which means that we can accommodate uh, our UAVs to different uh, needs of our customers. But uh, we know that we cannot do everything on our own. So we are forming strategic partnerships in Slovenia and abroad. As um, Marco uh, Pelhan already told, we are a small uh, market in Slovenia, so we are aiming to work together to have good relations uh, with uh, all the players in the market. And I think we are quite uh, good uh, at this moment in, in this aspect. But uh, when we as a company look at the UA, UAM market, we know that uh, this market is, uh, as we said, we, it's, it is very complex, but we see our, that our UAVs could be used as a very good tools uh, to doing the job. So, we are aiming to be like pick and shovel suppliers for, for this market. Regarding the, this uh, event that uh, we, are, we are kindly invited to uh, participate, we are always looking to expand uh, our network uh, of partners of um, uh, uh, professionals that we work with. 
and we are also looking to accelerate our business. Uh, so uh, uh, we are looking for different opportunities. And uh, in the end, uh, we are searching uh, ways to speed up the use of UAVs uh, in uh, urban environment, because at the moment, uh, the use is quite limited to some uh, specific tasks and limited tasks. But we see that technology is already capable of doing much more. And we are quite keen to speed up this process. So we are uh, searching for partners to speed up this process. So thank you for your uh, time. And uh, if we will discuss, if you have any more questions, we will discuss it later in the session. Yes, uh, thank you, Janis. And also thank you, Alex, for the question in the chat. All the questions will be answered later on in the round table. So uh, now uh, I would like to introduce our next speaker. He is coming from the One Drone Slovenian Company, which is the largest Slovenian drone related vendor, consultant, also education and training center to prepare uh, candidates to obtain the license for unmanned uh, aircraft. Uh, so with us is uh, Mr. Janas Nebes, the co-founder of One Drone. So Janas, please, the floor is yours. Hello, Daniel, and thank you for inviting us. Uh, today, I will present to you the One Drone Company. As you already mentioned, uh, we are uh, a kind of one-stop shop in the Slovenian market. Uh, and uh, we try to offer all the services which is possible to do legally with the drones. I think uh, we should start the PowerPoint now. Okay. So as I mentioned, I will talk about the drones in the real world today. What can we do and uh, how can we do business with, with drones? So as I mentioned, uh, one drone was formed in 2012. Uh, we operate since then exclusively from the incomes which we made on the market, so our customers want to gain profit from drones, not just investing. We try to offer everything that a customer needs from a drone, and in the following minutes, I will present to you what we do. Uh, so we started as a web shop, and, uh, and uh, very quick we evolved to a real retail shop with showroom and uh, all the drones which are in stock, which you can touch, test, uh, talk about them. These are mostly the most popular DJI drones, but also we are very strong on the market with the uh, FPV drones, uh, do-it-yourself components. So we have a lot of customers who are buying components to build their own drones professional drones and hobby drones. And we are also a supplier to many big professional drones for different services. And uh, because we want to know very well about the things that we are dealing, uh, we are a kind of forced to learn how to work with drones, how to provide services, and how to teach our customers. Uh, you know that drone legislation is quite complicated uh, around the world. And in the past era, uh, when the first generation of drone legislation was in the world, each country had its own rules. And it was quite impossible to be a European or a global provider because, because each, each country had a set of special rules. So we focused in 2016 to be the first company in Slovenia to get the, high, the highest class of certification. This was the former class D certification and this allowed us to fly drones legally also in the cities. With this license, we get a big experience with more than 400 documented and legal operations in the city. 
from all fields of work, mostly aerial photography, videography, but also land serving, photogrammetry, LiDAR, air serving, and so on. Uh, and of course, uh, we do uh, some business with our Ministry of Defense, with military, with European Defense Agency, some cross-border operations with DSAF uh, for border control, and so on. So we also have experience in that field. And uh, because we need tools to do the job, we have a fleet of more than 15 drones and counting uh, many certified drone pilots, operators, able to do any legal job which is possible today. And uh, as you know, uh, since the 1st of January this year, we have a common European legislation, uh, which will allow us to offer our services around the Europe. And as we speak, we are in final stage of uh, getting certified operator of specific category which will allow us also to do some beyond visual line of, line of sight. And uh, as we speak, uh, I believe in one, two, three weeks, we will hold one of the first license if, licenses in Europe for specific operation. And this also means a lot to our partners because we will enable to our partners in Slovenia uh, to get the licensing quick and to be more competitive in the European market. So, uh, as I was talking before, uh, the legislation is quite complicated and the process of getting all the licenses is quite difficult and expensive. So the only point for our company is that uh, with our experience that we have, we can help other companies to become certified operators. So uh, with our customers, where we have at the moment the majority of big Slovenian companies like uh, Eles company, which is operator of power grid, the Slovenian railway, the Triglau insurance company, the port of copper, uh, Energetica Ljubljana, the energetics company of Ljubljana, uh, post of Slovenia and many, many other companies who are using our solutions today. They are using drones to make businesses which are legally possible and which are meaning them saving of money. So this means that they can do their work faster, more efficient, and more safe. So for them, uh, first we offer, of course, the pre-sales consulting, because many companies today uh, think that drones are nice. So we have to do something with drones. But first, when they come to us, we tell them, OK, uh, tell me what do you want to do? So first we see if this is legal and if the drones are available. So we offer the right set of drones to our customers. Then for sure, we have to train the staff because today, uh, man is still important uh, link in the chain of command for the drones. Uh, the autonomous operations are not allowed and we need uh, specialized operators. So with our experience, it's very easy for us to train the operators at our customers. Of course, the, the messy part with no, which nobody wants to do is the paperwork. Uh, we can do all the paperwork, all the legal stuff which is possible to do. And of course, after the company is running, the next thing is the fleet management. As far as the training goes, we operate in our own training center in Ljubljana with a, a classroom for ground school where we can, uh, when we can teach about 15 students. And also we have our own uh, field where we can train line of sight operations. Uh, so basically everything is in the house. Uh, 
uh, within five minutes from one location to another. Uh, we are based in Ljubljana, so uh, accessibility is very good. Highway less than one kilometer from our facilities. And here we do all the theoretical training for all classes. So for open and the specific category uh, to the new European legislation, we do type specific training, we do mission specific training, and also we do training for government activities. So search and rescue military and police. We have a very, very close relations with Slovenian police and Slovenian army, which enables us to grow together with them. And uh, at the end of the day, when the operator has the drones and when the staff is trained, uh, we keep things going. So the one drone fleet management is a solution when we do a complete work for the operator and you can consider it as a bookkeeping for drones. So even that we have good drones and we have trained personnel, we still have to do a lot of paperwork. We still have to do record keeping. Uh, we still have to do the auditing. So uh, watching the company if they're do, doing right and prevent the, uh, prevent the accident before it happens. So with our services, uh, you just fly and we do the rest. And the good thing is that now with the new European legislation, we can offer our services all around Europe. So here we are and you are all welcome to take advantage of us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Janas, for your presentation. It's important to understand that hardware and software could coexist also by building the entire framework. But what is also important is that we need to train pilots. So the next presentation will be from the company NerveTech, which is high-tech R&D company specializing in vehicle simulation technology. So uh, Matej Vengo is the CEO of NerveTech, will deliver his presentation. So Matej, you can start. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. My name is Matej, as Daniel already explained. Uh, I'm CEO of uh, NerveTech. Uh, similar to what Mr. Taller said, we are also focusing on simulators and simulation, but here we are not focusing on the electronics part or the AI, but actually on, on, on the human factor and the pilots. Because uh, we all know that uh, in, in the future of, of uh, urban air mobility, we're gonna have, um, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, can you see it shift? Uh, no, you need to click on a presentation and then move. Otherwise ah, we can ah. do it instead of you. Yeah, sorry for that. Um, so uh, of course, for the future of, of uh, urban air mobility, we all hope it will happen soon. But what we also have to know is that uh, regulatory and of course legislation restrictions uh, won't allow, uh, let's say, AI uh, uh, VTOLs for, for quite a long time. Uh, we'll need pilots for that. So if we are, let's say, calculating uh, scale of city of Los Angeles, and if there will be, let's say, uh, until uh, 2025, 500 uh, VTOLs, uh, we'll probably going to need at least four per per. Uh, per um, aircraft and this is 2000 pilots. And with current status of, of training of pilots uh, on, on big simulators, uh, on heavy regulatory uh, demands, of course, uh, this is quite impossible actually to fill this uh, VTOLs with, with pilots. So this is uh, why we developed uh, pilot recruitment evaluation and uh, training system, uh, which is based on, on our own proprietary uh, motion platform. Uh, why is it so small? Uh, there's a purpose for that, of course. Uh, we know that simulation and simulators have been part of aerospace industries for at least 120 years, even before screens existed, actually. Um, but the problem comes with, with the cost of those simulators. The professional simulators that are used by, let's say, companies Airbus uh, and Boeing, uh, they cost multi, multiple ten, tens of millions of dollars. 
Uh, and of course, it's impossible to fit all those pilots that I mentioned into those simulators to train them. And of course, since the simulator training is obligatory by law, um, it's quite impossible actually to fit those VTOLs with, with those pilots. So uh, of course, what we were thinking is making a smaller simulator, which can be fitted in a classroom, uh, multiple simulators, maybe even 20 of them, uh, like hubs uh, with one, with one uh, trainer. Uh, and of course, with this, we can speed up the process of training uh, and uh, of course also uh, decrease the, the, the value of, of the cost of training the pilot. Uh, so what we are doing. Uh, so we put pilot in to stress in critical real life situations. Uh, let's say we do uh, twins of, of environments and put them in different conditions. Uh, also different, uh, uh, let's say, windy conditions, different environment conditions, also ground effect conditions and stuff like this. Uh, we are using biometric sensors like uh, eye tracking, uh, EEG stuff and st stuff like that. Um, and of course, we can do any type of customizable terrain, weather and flying conditions. Um, and since this data is not only impor important for uh, pilot training, um, we also use it for using it to do autonomous uh, training of, of aircrafts, like also Mr. Taylor, Taylor explained. Um, so what we, we can achieve here is do twins of pilots, put them uh, in, in uh, VTOLs. This is stuff like US Air Force is also working on. And uh, we can achieve better behavior of autonomous systems in the future. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, we are using state-of-the-art uh, sensors. Uh, so these are all medical grade. So they can be used for, for pilot training also on, on, on medical grade. Um, and maybe just to explain a bit about our team. Uh, we are all experts in our own fields. Uh, also, Yura Leskovic, who you probably know, is a data science uh, at Pinterest and a professor at Stanford. Um, and I guess this, these are our partners. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you have any more questions. I guess this is it. Uh, thank you, Matei. So now I invite all the panelists, uh, basically all the speakers, uh, to switch on the cameras and join us in the round table. So what you could see is that we are looking for solutions for, you know, uh, the mega cities. Um, and in the mega cities, we will need to uh, manage resources in better, more sustainable and a wiser way. We believe that mobility will play an important role. We believe that uh, it's not easy or um, in short time uh, achievable to do a land acquisition and build the whole infrastructure going from road, rail, hyperloop and, and other infrastructures. And it's also costly. Uh, and we believe that the solution is to use the third dimensional space. Now, today we are focusing on non-passenger operations. Uh, yes, in Slovenia, we have uh, the Pipistrel company and next week we will have another similar webinar focusing on passenger related uh, solutions coming from air, ground and sea. And you will see the whole portfolio of our passenger vehicles. But this is more now applications that I personally believe can be uh, in cities uh, available immediately. Um, with some, of course, uh, limitations. So, but before we go into uh, more deeply into solutions for megacity, I have first question for Mr. Marco Taller, and it's about, you know, Slovenia. We are a two million country, and it's quite interesting to see so many quite mature and advanced startups in this space, in this field of urban air mobility. So according to you, what is the reason behind it? I think it's a convergence of, of two things uh, primarily. Um, one is that our education system, especially on the engineering front, is very good. Uh, if you are an undergraduate or graduate, graduate student uh, in engineering from Slovenia and you want to compare yourself with any of your mates from any of the top engineering universities worldwide, um, I 
thing you have nothing to worry about. Um, so the, the engineering knowledge is really high. Uh, what we've also, the second one, what we've also seen today is that the passion and history for aviation in Slovenia is uh, also very strong. You know, everything from Edvard Drusian onwards, um, we are really passionate about aviation and we are always pushing the limits. Uh, and also, for example, in sports aviation, I started, I stopped counting how many world records we have or, or on the production side, you know, with a land flight like 40, 50 years ago uh, that we're producing uh, high performance uh, composite gliders. And then all the spin-off companies that were actually generated from that um, company. And now, for example, what PIP is really doing in, in the light sport aircraft, general aviation, and uh, especially electric propulsion, um, we have definitely huge engineering um, expertise on the education side and also the passion for aviation. And I believe when you converge the two, you get a very, um, a very good playground so that a lot of startups can, can spring out of that. Of course, building startups is one thing, but then creating scalable globally recognized businesses out of it that's a completely different ball game yes thank you for that uh, and as we mentioned earlier we are very proud on our university uh, we know that aerospace industry is very competitive market and uh, more than 100 universities compete on u.s uh, basically uh, championship you know for radio control aircraft and you know, Slovenia being first and being ahead of Stanford, MIT, Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, you know, uh, universities coming from Singapore, Hong Kong, China, even uh, Israel, other countries from Europe, it's quite impressive. So we are having talent. So that's why also our ecosystem is, is quite rich and it's uh, vertically integrated if I see uh, your roles in this space. Now, uh, you mentioned, Marco, uh, uh, scale-ups, and I'll go to the next Marco, Marco Pilhan. So, Marco, uh, you have, uh, with Ciestral, you have international experience. Um, how, you know, uh, what are the reasons or how you are able to scale up and, and what kind of, in, inside internalization, what kind of opportunities you see for, for our ecosystem globally? Um, thank you, thank you for this question. Well, you know, um, Slovenia being uh, described as we are describing it now, um, yes, it's an environment where you have a lot of talent, but it's also a, an environment where you have a complete uh, uh, dearth of uh, uh, kind of uh, capital, right? So, uh, you know, all of the companies that are presenting today, except maybe Marco is part now, the other Marco, a bigger group, right, which does a lot of things. It's an industrial conglomerate, uh, um, have uh, grown organically or are growing completely organically, yeah? which means, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, uh, it's kind of an, it's an achievement, but it's also a very, very it's a competitive disadvantage, of course, uh, absolutely. You know, with all the liquidity that we see in the markets today, it's, uh, um, it's puzzling uh, how uh, few uh, foreign direct investments we have in Slovenia because of our problematic uh, environment at the moment that I know also you, Daniel, and everybody is trying to work at, in changing it and reforming it and so on, right? And uh, so that's, you know, we've seen our competitors that started later than us with let's say you know comparable technology or or, or not so good technology uh, um, get incredible investments you know uh, our competitors in switzerland in in germany and so on uh, different ecosystems uh, industrially speaking uh, whereas in slovenia that's a that's a different story and uh, the scale up yeah you know it, it's it's capital related you know talent is here we all understand that i think it's clear from today's presentation that uh, we can uh, compete uh, globally uh, and but organic uh, competition organic growth uh, living uh, you know building startups uh, literally from sales is of course not a scale up strategy 
<laughs> it's, it's not going to happen. You know, it's a, a, we're not magicians. Uh, um, so that's, 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 I see still and always, and even if you talk to all of our colleagues in Slovenian business, in the Slovenian business environment, uh, that's a big uh, problem. The other one is, you know, yes, we are proud of uh, our aviation history, but we also, you know, squandered our national airline and all its ecosystem for, you know, literally was sold to, to some crook speculators, you know, which destroyed, uh, you know, uh, 60 years of value, yeah, in two years, you know. And uh, that's, that makes you really mad if you are passionate about aviation. <laughs> but hey, you know, we are, we are going to fight the good fight here and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll still be, still be not only talking, but yeah, growing in the next, uh, uh, you know, in the next, let's, let's, let's call it five years. Yeah. Yes, uh, like in every environment, there are challenges and opportunities. Um, and what I learned in, in our previous conversation is that we are also open, you know, to partner uh, in different stages. So, uh, therefore, uh, so my next question goes to Janis Langus. Uh, and uh, you were talking about, uh, so for you, I have two questions, one also from audience. Uh, but uh, my question would go, you were uh, talking that there is more demand for the VTOL capabilities um, on the aircraft. So my question goes, how do you see the commercialization of the VTOL operations in the future? And also the second question would be, um, do you use any charging or battery swap technologies, stations? Okay, Daniel, thank you for your questions. Uh, regarding the commercialization, uh, we all know that uh, this is a difficult task that we have on hand, but from technological point of view, I would say that the sky is the limit, or as our uh, legislation would say, 120 meters is the limit for us at the moment. But uh, these uh, things will, uh, will evolve, and uh, I believe that the market is huge. It's, uh, it, 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 uh, the, the, the demands are huge, and the technology is here. Uh, there are several technical tasks that st we still have to uh, complete, but uh, and also the legislation tasks. But I think that um, it will it will evolve. And uh, but to be realistic, I would be quite happy if uh, in the in my lifetime I will be able to do a autonomous flight in in a city center. To be quite uh, honest, but. Uh, sometimes things happen quite rapidly. When we look back, uh, we, uh, for instance, we look at uh, our mobile phones, uh, you wouldn't imagine in uh, 20 or 30 years ago that you will be able to have uh, this kind of power in your pocket. And so the technology can uh, surprise us much more than we can expect. Uh, regarding the charging stations, uh, as I said, we are, um, we are a company that is... Uh, focusing more on UAVs as, such as platforms. And we are uh, doing strategic partnerships with companies that are more uh, into developing uh, charging stations and also autonomous landing stations. So we have a partner in Austria, which is developing an autonomous land landing station that will use our uh, UAVs. So uh, we, we are more than happy to receive uh, any information regarding this technology. And we can also then translate this to our partners that, which are more focused on this techno technology. And uh, regarding also the technology of the batteries, I see this currently as one of the bottlenecks of the development because um, the weight of battery is limiting our, our capabilities, much like the uh, the weight of the batteries is actually limiting the use of uh, more advanced smartphones, uh, in a sense. So we are all probably hoping for a big development in the area of uh, battery technology. Yes, yes, the batteries are, are a topic. Also, uh, Slovenian ecosystem is exploring the hydrogen. So we already have first uh, research work uh, on, related to hydrogen. There are also other opportunities. But going back to regulation, uh, I have a question for 
basically Janus Nibes. Uh, so what are the some challenges, you know, related to regulation that uh, we would need to overcome? So to make uh, urban air mobility a reality soon? Yeah, uh, the regulation and certification is one of the biggest challenges because today, if I want to take a simple video of a house in the city with a toy like this, I must have a paperwork like I am airline trafficker. So uh, it is uh, really quite demanding and still in the process. However, the new European legislation uh, has made possible all the things that we want to do. But for the beginning, let me show you an illustration about what I will speak. So when we speak about air mobility, uh, we are speaking about something like this. Uh, autonomous uh, vehicles which will transport people in the cities. Uh, it is not such a big problem to build them, but the first problem is the propulsion. propulsion. The uh, vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, multi-rotors, they are very inefficient, so it's almost magic to get more than 30 minutes of flight time, and nobody will pay for that. However, it is even more difficult to certify them, because today anyone can build something like this, and it can fly. But to certify it, it is quite difficult. So unfortunately, the only personal transport which is legal to fly today in the city would be this, the flying car. Uh, so uh, if we step down a little, uh, I believe that the first thing that we will see will be a package delivery. This is the thing which is already possible today. Uh, still a little difficult because if we look at the, if we look at the, uh, at the legislation, uh, we can do already today flying beyond visual line of sight in a segregated airspace over unpopulated areas. But if we have populated area, or if we have open uh, airspace, we have to solve these two problems. A solution for populated area would be certified drones. But to certify drones, we still need, we first need the standards. So the European community and also other, world, other parts of the world will have to produce standards so we can certify the drones. Uh, regarding the flying in open airspace, there is a solution. It is called U-Space. So the uh, dedicated airspace for unmanned aerial vehicles. And this is the thing which is already around the corner. And with all the companies uh, which we have in Slovenia, also our partners which are present here today, I think uh, we are able to create the new space in Slovenia and to show to the other parts of the world, world that it really works. So maybe uh, this would be a challenge uh, for all of us to come together and uh, try to do something. Yes, and I need also to mention what you mentioned uh, lastly about you know, this new space. Also, the city of Ljubljana is a member of UAM Initiative Cities Community that is led by uh, Vasilis Aguridas and uh, where cities are, you know, discussing and uh, collaborating to create safe uh, airspace above the cities. But, you know, going from regulation to public acceptance, which is another key thing to master. Uh, so, Matej Vengos, uh, the question for you. So, you're talking more about, you know, pilot training, demand for pilots, and so on. But we need also acceptance or embracement from communities. So, how simulation technology can be used to win or explain or show uh, the public acceptance? And I will just mention... Uh, 
we are using in our city lab, we are using the technology acceptance model that is based on previous experience and understanding the use, the easy of use of technologies, how people respond. And of course, when we did a survey related to drones, everything was related with experience from movies. So people were quite skeptical in Europe. But Matej, going back to you, how technology can help us win the public or community or social acceptance, embracement of this new technology? Yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, yeah, definitely. Simulators are one of the tools that can be used uh, to measure, let's say, user experience. Um, and of course, with our design that we have, we have a dome design for the simulator. Uh, we can also uh, measure actually the noise ex experience, uh, exposure. Um, and But what's most important is to see with biometric sensors how people actually feel in an aircraft. So using maybe even VR goggles, we can actually measure uh, how, how, how they feel. And of course, uh, based on that, um, make the user experience much, much better. Um, for example, right now, uh, we are using HP latest model of, of goggles that have all the biometric sensors actually install, installed in, in, in the headset, uh, eye trackers, motion sensors, uh, even uh, emotion sensors. So with that technology, uh, we can definitely help cities get the feel how the, the, the aircraft or these zones that need to be done, the corridors, um, how, how they would affect people and actually uh, see how they need to, to project and of course to, to, to build them. Yes. Of course, launch pads and everything uh, all together. Yeah, yeah, so many, many things to, to discuss and to research and we need to also to do the master plan, the real estate plans and so on. So yes, there is a lot of things. So now I have basically the last question for you all. So uh, since we are living in connected uh, world uh, where we are all hyper connected and so on, so, and you already have also international experience and we have many, um, you know, uh, participants from all over the world. So we are on all continent, basically from all continent. So uh, my question would go in quick, maybe just uh, answer from you all. So what you're looking for, what you're open uh, to discuss further with uh, somebody in the audience that would be interesting to collaborate with you. And I will just start with Matej Vengos who was last and then uh, we will go in, in same direction. Yeah, since um, maybe I didn't mention this, but uh, we all already have a UAM challenge. Uh, it's uh, if you, you can check it on arch.iro. Um, and we are talking to cities to actually install our simulators to see the user experience. And we would definitely like to broad, broaden that uh, network. And uh, not only that, but as I said, you know, if you need <laughs> 2000 pilots in just one city, uh, which is probably not enough for, for a city like Los Angeles. I'm doing this comparison because Uber elevated uh, this projection. Um, of course, you need a lot of simulators. So we are definitely open to collaboration. Uh, I don't think it's actually relevant to, to my colleagues here, but definitely to all the participants. Uh, if, um, I don't know, in any way you see a use of our, of, of our, our technology as a viable solution to, to, to make this public acceptance uh, better, then definitely we are, we are open to collaboration. Okay, thank you. And same question goes to Janus from OneDrone. Yes, uh, OneDrone is one of the few companies in Europe who is able to do legally everything what is possible to be legally done. And uh, with our uh, existing partners in Slovenia, I'm meaning uh, most of the big companies, we have many business cases for using of drones, like insurance, public safety, security, power line inspection, land surveying. Uh, so we can offer our services and our experience to any company in Europe who would like to use drones legally. So uh, everyone is really welcome. Mm -hmm. So what is, you know, um, 
how Elvonics see, you know, the potential collaboration and future needs? Well, on uh, first notice, we uh, are uh, meshing with and uh, collaborating with uh, a lot of partners from this uh, uh, panel as, uh, as we speak, but we are also open to uh, forming new partnerships. And uh, as a company, of course, we are striving towards growth. So uh, or uh, organic growth, as we know, is quite difficult. So we are also interested in accelerating our growth in any way. So if uh, there are partners out there who uh, think that could work with us or we would be uh, interesting to, for, for them, we are open for contacts. Great, great. So Marco Pilhan, I think uh, Arctica and Antarctica will not be so interesting. <laughs> it's freezing there, but uh, what are some other areas for collaboration with Sea Astral that you see? Oh, why, why not? Why not? Uh, uh, you know, actually, both in the Arctic and Antarctica, you can actually do uh, BVLOS flights. And one of our partners uh, in the Arctic, in the Canadian Arctic, uh, that uh, um, uses uh, our system is actually uh, uh, one of the most experienced BVLOS operators in the world because of that, right? So, uh, yeah. But uh, in terms of the future, you know, as everybody said, uh, I think that uh, the Slovenian ecology is definitely uh, ready for some big things in the next few years. Uh, if I may make a prediction, I think you will see our indigenous UAM uh, uh, probably taking off exactly in this partnership uh, one way or the other because of the experiences we have and the collaborations that we have established. Um, but uh, of course, yeah, we are, I think everybody here is absolutely open for, for some uh, uh, boost ups in terms of, uh, you know, collaborative uh, um, cooperation and uh, also on the capital side, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And Marco Taller, from your end, what are the last thoughts or ideas for collaboration and future partnerships? Well, I think we've shown today that uh, together as a community, we have huge uh, engineering expertise uh, on the design of the system and also the complete network and all the infrastructure that goes around it. So um, I think that uh, this is a great substrate or a great basis, you know, to spin off uh, this technology into a number of different uh, startups or, or big businesses uh, down the line. So uh, we are definitely, I think, um, the smart investors and partners um, would be a, will be able to recognize the assets the, that we have in Slovenia uh, and, of course, uh, then uh, openly uh, start discussing uh, about all the collaboration options. Uh, you know, this is basically... In, in collector, this is the the, the basic uh, uh, way of how we're doing it. We have a, a huge technological base. Then we then spin off different startups, whether that be in the industry 4.0 space or in other uh, mobility uh, uh, sectors, for example, and, and similar. So I think having an open mind uh, to tap into this knowledge, uh, uh, know-how and technology, uh, and then see the whole thing in terms of how you can package that to a breakthrough product or service in the market and then make it happen. Thank you. Uh, so with that, I would conclude our roundtable was very uh, insightful and, and inspiring, you know, to see all the insights. And now I would like to invite Mr. Vit Habian from the Spirit Slovenia to deliver some final thoughts and words uh, for the end of this amazing event. Uh, yes, thank you, Daniel. Uh, it's been great to hear all about all these solutions coming uh, from Slovenia. Uh, we have even much more to, to, to deliver and to show to the world. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, uh, we'll be present there at Expo Dubai, uh, starting uh, in in the second uh, in the second part of this year, going all the way also in the in the start of the next year, 
uh, and especially on the topics of uh, aerospace, urban air, urban and uh, rural development and smart cities and also mobility, you will find even more companies from field of mobility and, and similar companies uh, like were presented here. I would also like to invite everyone um, to contact us, uh, whether you have any information and you would like searching for any information, searching for context, partnerships, whatever. We at Spirit Slovenia, uh, Slovenian Business Development Agency uh, are here for everyone. So uh, we are, let's say, one-stop shop for whoever would like to do business with Slovenia. So don't, do not hesitate, contact us. We'll share our contacts in, in this, this post uh, event uh, mailing. And also do not, you can also contact me directly through LinkedIn or directly on my e email. Um, I would also like to invite you on our uh, next events. Uh, best solution is high-end mobility. It's happening already next week. So everybody invited also some great solutions coming there and also in the, in the, in the, in, on the events which will follow uh, to that. So uh, thank you once more, Daniel. Thank you Witt, for your kind words. Thank you for invitation to uh, all what will happening uh, in next week and further on. This event has been recorded, so recording will be available for all, so you can review it. And I encourage you to reach out to our speakers and to Spirit Slovenia organization and let's connect, let's collaborate and let's co-develop the future of mobility. Uh, and let's improve our lives on better and make everything more sustainable uh, because we also need to help our planet. So with that, I would like to conclude our event. The timing is perfect. So we are in time, we are in line with our timing and I wish you all a great day and talk to you all soon and looking forward to next interaction. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.